The Ferengi terrorized the galaxy, brutalizing and exploiting countless alien races until they fucked with the humans. Michael Scorer gripped the controls of the Arclight as the battered smuggling ship rocketed through the seedy underbelly of the Andromeda sector. Scorer's jaw clenched. He stared at the flashing proximity alert on the console. Something big was approaching fast, too fast. Ferengi warship decloaking off the port bow, said the ship's AI in a flat mechanical tone. They're arming weapons and maneuvering to intercept. Scorer slammed a fist against the console, the damn Ferengi, ruthless militaristic alien bastards that used their advanced tech to conquer and enslave. And Scorer had a cargo hold full of their illegal biotech, exactly the kind of score to draw their attention out here on the fringes. A green reptilian face with cold black eyes materialized on the viewscreen. The Ferengi captain, clad in spiked battle armor, flashed razor-sharp teeth. Human scum! Surrender your ship and cargo, or be destroyed! Scorer met the alien's predatory gaze and uttered two defiant words. Fuck you! The Arclight's engines roared as Scorer yanked the ship into a sharp dive, the hull groaning under the strain. Weapon fire from the warship sliced through the void. Scorer had to get this cargo to the resistance. This Ferengi biotech could change everything. But first he had to survive this standoff. Nobody intimidated humanity, and one way or another the Ferengi were about to learn that the hard way. The Arclight shuddered as another salvo of weapons fire slammed into its shields. Scorer gritted his teeth, hands flying over the controls as he tried to evade the Ferengi warship's relentless assault, but just as he was about to make another desperate maneuver, a massive shape emerged from the void. It was a Ferengi dreadnought, easily dwarfing Varys's ship. The vortex, Scorer realized with a sinking feeling in his gut. He'd heard stories about this infamous vessel and its ruthless commander, High Commander Zolak. The vortex hailed the arc light, and Zolak's imposing figure appeared on the viewscreen. His battle-scarred face was set in a scowl, eyes glinting with malice. Captain Varys, stand down, Zolak ordered, his voice dripping with authority. I'll handle this human filth myself. Varys's image appeared in a split-screen view, his expression a mix of frustration and fear. But, sir, I almost have him. The cargo is no longer your concern, Zolak snapped. Now, human, you have something that belongs to the Ferengi Empire. Hand it over, and I might consider letting you live. Scorer's mind raced. He couldn't let the Ferengi get their claws on this biotech. I don't know what you're talking about, he bluffed. Zolak's lips curled into a sneer. Don't play games with me, human. We know you have the new strain of the Ravager virus, a biological weapon that can target specific species. With it, the Ferengi will be unstoppable. Scorer's blood ran cold. The Ravager virus. He'd heard whispers of its terrifying potential, but he never imagined the Ferengi had actually created it. If they unleashed this weapon, countless lives would be lost. He made a split-second decision. Go to hell, Zolak. Scorer slammed his fist on the console, activating the Arclight's experimental cloaking device. The ship shimmered and vanished from view, the device masking its heat signature and sensor profile. The Ferengi opened fire, lances of energy scorching the space where the Arclight had been moments before. Scorer pushed the engines to their limit, weaving and dodging as he plotted a hyperspace jump. Alarms blared as the ship's shields reached their breaking point. Just as they failed, Scorer punched the hyperdrive and the arc light leaped into the safety of hyperspace. On the Vortex's bridge, Varys slammed his fist against a bulkhead, seething with rage. I almost had him. Zolak's eyes narrowed. You underestimated the human, Captain. A mistake I won't tolerate again. Find Scorer and bring me that cargo, or I'll have your hide. As Varys stormed off to begin the hunt, Zolak leaned back in his command chair a calculating smile playing across his lips. This human, Scorer, had spirit. But he would break him, just as he had broken so many others. And with the Ravager virus in his grasp, Zolak's ascent to the top of the Ferengi hierarchy would be unstoppable. The arc light shuddered as it dropped out of hyperspace, the damaged ship creaking and groaning from the beating it had taken. 
Scora checked the readouts and cursed under his breath. Life support was failing, shields were down, and the engines were barely holding together. He needed to set down somewhere for repairs and fast. Zephyr Prime loomed ahead, a small, unassuming planet known for its thriving black market and eclectic mix of galactic outcasts. Scora had been here before, back when he was just a small-time smuggler trying to make a name for himself. It seemed like a lifetime ago. The arc light limped into the planet's atmosphere, smoke trailing from its engines as Scora guided it towards a familiar landing pad. As the ship touched down with a bone-jarring thud, a figure emerged from a nearby hangar, waving at Scora through the cockpit window. Jasper Knox the grizzled old mechanic had been a fixture on Zephyr Prime for as long as anyone could remember. Scora had relied on his skills more than once to get out of a tight spot. Scora popped the hatch and climbed out, wincing as he surveyed the damage to his ship. Knox let out a low whistle as he approached, shaking his head. Damn, Scora. Looks like you pissed off the wrong people this time. Scora managed a tight smile. You could say that. Think you can patch her up? Knox rubbed his chin, his eyes roving over the battered hull. It'll take some work, but yeah, I can fix her. Gonna cost you, though. Scorer's shoulders slumped. He was running low on funds, as it was. I don't have much to offer right now, Knox, but if you do this for me, I'll owe you one. Anything you need. A slow grin spread across Knox's weathered face. Funny you should say that. I might just have a job for you, something right up your alley. He led Scorer into the hangar lowering his voice as they walked. Word is the Ferengi have set up a secret base here on Zephyr Prime, using it as a staging ground for some kind of bioweapons research. Skora's blood ran cold. The Ravager virus, it had to be. Narx continued, I need someone to infiltrate the base, find out what they're up to. You've got the skills and the experience. You do this for me and I'll fix your ship up good as new. Skora hesitated. Going up against the Ferengi again was a huge risk, but if he could get his hands on intel about their bioweapons program... I'll do it, he said finally, but I'm going to need some gear. As Knox led him deeper into the hangar to start prepping for the mission, a figure detached from the shadows. It was a human woman, lean and muscular, with piercing green eyes and a shock of red hair. Michael Scora, she said, her voice low and urgent. We need to talk. Scora tensed, his hand dropping to the blaster at his hip. Who are you? Arya Vance, she replied, and I have information you need. The Ravager virus, it's just the beginning. The Ferengi are working on something far worse, something that could shift the balance of power in the galaxy forever. Scora's mind raced. If what she was saying was true... He nodded slowly. All right, Vance, talk. What do you know? As Vance began to share her intel, Scora couldn't shake the feeling that he was about to be drawn into something much bigger than he'd ever faced before. But one thing was certain. He wasn't about to let the Ferengi get away with their plans, not if he had anything to say about it. Scora's heart pounded as he crept through the Ferengi base, the holographic mask concealing his human features. Nox's tech was top-notch, allowing Scorer to blend in seamlessly with the Ferengi technicians bustling about the facility. He made his way to a computer terminal, his fingers flying over the controls as he hacked into the system. What he found made his blood run cold. The Ferengi weren't just mass-producing the Ravager virus, they were experimenting with something far more sinister, genetic manipulation on a scale he had never seen before. They were trying to find a way to control other species, to bend them to their will on a biological level. Scora downloaded everything he could, his hands shaking as he transferred the data to a portable drive. He was so focused on his task that he didn't hear the footsteps behind him until it was too late. You there, what are you doing? A Ferengi guard barked. Scora whirled around, his hand reaching for his blaster. The guard's eyes widened as he saw the weapon, and he reached for his own. Scora fired first, the shot taking the guard in the chest. But the commotion had alerted others, and soon the room was filled with the sound of blaster fire. Scorer ducked and weaved, his heart racing as he returned fire. He managed to take down several guards, but more kept coming. He knew he had to get out of there, and fast. 
He made a break for it, sprinting through the base as alarms blared and Ferengi soldiers shouted. Blaster bolt sizzled past his head, scorching the walls. Scorer's lungs burned as he ran, the data drive clutched tightly in his hand. Somehow he made it out of the base, stumbling into the harsh sunlight of Zephyr Prime. He didn't stop running until he reached the arc light, his chest heaving as he climbed aboard. But he wasn't alone. Impressive work back there, a voice said. Scorer spun around, his blaster leveled at the intruder. It was Arya Vance, her hands raised in a gesture of peace. I'm not here to fight you, Scorer, she said. I'm here to help. Help? Who the hell are you? Scorer demanded. I'm with the Tempest, a human resistance movement dedicated to fighting the Ferengi. We've been watching you, Scorer. We know what you've been through, what you've seen. Scorer lowered his blaster slightly. The data I downloaded. It could change everything, Vance said, her eyes intense. With that information, we could find a way to stop the Ferengi's plans, to free the galaxy from their tyranny. But we need your help, Scorer. We need you to join us. Scorer hesitated. He had always worked alone, trusting no one but himself. But the things he had seen in that base, the horrors the Ferengi were planning, he couldn't face that alone. All right, he said finally. I'm in. But if we're going to do this, we're going to do it my way. Vance smiled, her green eyes glinting. I wouldn't have it any other way. As the arc light lifted off from Zephyr Prime, Scorer knew that his life had just taken a turn he could never have imagined. But for the first time in a long time, he felt a sense of purpose, a reason to fight. The Ferengi had no idea what was coming for them. The arc light sliced through the void, its hull still bearing the scars of Scorer's narrow escape from the Ferengi. Vance sat in the co-pilot's seat, her eyes fixed on the nav computer, as she guided the ship through a treacherous asteroid field. Scorer's hands tightened on the controls, sweat beading on his brow as he maneuvered past the tumbling rocks. The asteroids parted, revealing a massive installation built into the heart of the largest asteroid, the Tempest's secret base. Scorer brought the arc light in for a landing, the ship shuddering as it touched down on the hangar deck. He and Vance disembarked, greeted by a squad of heavily armed resistance fighters. Their leader, a grizzled man with a scar running down his cheek, stepped forward. Grayson Stark, he introduced himself, clasping Scorer's hand in a firm grip. Been fighting the Ferengi scum for longer than I care to remember. Vance tells me you've got intel that could turn the tide. Scorer nodded, holding up the data drive. It's all here, everything the Ferengi are planning. Stark led them to the base's command center, a hive of activity filled with humans and aliens from a dozen different species. He inserted the drive into a computer terminal, his eyes widening as he scanned the data. By the stars, he breathed. The Elotians, the Ferengi, are going to test their new bioweapon on them. Vance leaned in, her brow furrowed. The Elotians, I've never heard of them. Peaceful folk, pre-space flight. Their genetics are unique, makes them perfect guinea pigs for the Ferengi's twisted experiments. Stark slammed his fist on the console. We can't let this happen. Scorer crossed his arms. So what's the plan? Stark brought up a holographic display of a Ferengi transport ship. We intercept the bioweapon shipment before it reaches the Elosian homeworld. Destroy it. You're the expert smuggler, Scorer. I need you to lead the mission. Scorer hesitated. This was bigger than anything he'd ever taken on before. But he thought of the Elotians, of the countless lives at stake, and he knew he couldn't walk away. I'm in, he said. As the Tempest crew bustled around them, preparing for the mission, Scorer's comm unit beeped. He frowned, activating the device. A holographic image of Jasper Knox flickered to life, the old mechanic's face bruised and bloodied. Scorer, Knox croaked. The Ferengi, they got me. Prison ship, they want... the data. The message cut off abruptly. Scorer's heart sank. Knox had risked everything to help him, and now he was paying the price. Vance put a hand on his shoulder. We'll get him back, Scorer, I promise, but the mission comes first. We stop that bioweapon, then we'll move heaven and earth to rescue Knox. 
Skora clenched his jaw, torn between his loyalty to his friend and the weight of the task ahead. But he knew Vance was right. The stakes were too high. He had to see this through. He took a deep breath, pushing aside his fear and doubt. It was time to show the Ferengi what happened when they messed with humanity. Time to make them pay for every atrocity, every innocent life snuffed out in their quest for power. The Ferengi had no idea what was coming for them. The arc light shook as Skora pushed the engines to their limit, the ship screaming through the void toward the coordinates of the Ferengi bioweapon shipment. In the co-pilot's seat, Vance checked the readouts on her console, her brow furrowed in concentration. Three Ferengi escort ships just as we expected, she said. They're not going to make this easy for us. Skora grinned, his fingers dancing across the controls. Since when do we like things easy? As they closed in on the Ferengi ships, the escort vessels peeled away from the main transport, their weapon systems locking onto the arc light. Skora juked and weaved, the ship shuddering as the first volley of blaster fire slammed into their shields. Shields at 70%, Vance called out, her fingers flying over her console. Rerouting auxiliary power to compensate. Skora gritted his teeth, swinging the arc light around in a tight arc. He targeted the nearest escort ship, squeezing the trigger on the ship's cannons. The Ferengi vessel exploded in a brilliant flash of light, debris spiraling out into space. The remaining escorts redoubled their efforts, their blaster fire intensifying. Skora rolled the arc light, dodging the worst of the barrage, but the ship's shields were taking a beating. We need to end this now, he growled, lining up another shot. With a final precise burst from the arc light's cannons, the second escort ship was reduced to a cloud of shrapnel. The third, seeing the fate of its companions, broke off its attack and fled, leaving the transport vessel exposed. Skora brought the arc light alongside the transport, matching its speed. Vance and the other Tempest operatives readied their weapons, preparing to board. Skora activated the docking clamps, the arc light shuddering as it latched onto the Ferengi ship's airlock. With a hiss of pressurized air, the airlock doors slid open. Skora and his team charged through, blasters at the ready. They were immediately met with a hail of weapons fire from the Ferengi security forces, the air crackling with energy as the two sides exchanged shots. Skora ducked behind a bulkhead, popping out to snap off a few shots at the Ferengi. Beside him, Vance lobbed a grenade down the corridor, the explosion sending Ferengi soldiers flying. They pushed forward, fighting their way through the ship's narrow corridors. The Ferengi were tenacious, but Skora and his team were fueled by a grim determination. They couldn't let the bioweapon reach the Elosians. At last, they reached the ship's cargo hold. Skora and Vance took up positions on either side of the door, nodding to each other. On Skora's signal, they burst through, blasters blazing. The hold was cavernous, filled with rows of sealed containers. Skora's heart sank as he realized the truth. The containers were empty. The bioweapon was gone. It's a decoy, he said, his voice hollow. The real shipment must already be on its way to the Elosian homeworld. Vance cursed under her breath. We need to move now, if that bioweapon is deployed... They raced back to the arc light, Skora's mind reeling. They had been so close, but the Ferengi had outsmarted them. As they reached the airlock, a familiar figure stepped out from the shadows. Ferris, Skora snarled, raising his blaster. I should have known you'd show up. The Ferengi captain held up his hands, his expression grim. I'm not here to fight you, Skora. I'm here to help. Skora laughed bitterly. Help? Since when do the Ferengi help anyone but themselves? Since some of us realize that using bioweapons is madness, Varys shot back. Do you think I want to see entire species wiped out? The Ferengi who are behind this, they're a rogue faction. They don't represent all of us. Vance stepped forward, her blaster still trained on Varys. And why should we trust you? Because I have information you need, Varys said. I know where the real bioweapon is being taken, and I can help you stop it, but only if you help me expose the ones responsible. Skora hesitated, his finger tightening on the trigger. 
Every instinct screamed at him not to trust Varys, but the Ferengi was right. They needed all the help they could get. Fine, he said at last, lowering his blaster. But if you double-cross us, I'll make sure you live just long enough to regret it. Varys nodded, his expression somber. Understood, now we need to hurry. The Elotians don't have much time. As they boarded the arc light, Skora couldn't shake the feeling that they were heading into a trap. But trap or not, they had to try. The fate of an entire species hung in the balance. He just hoped they weren't already too late. The arc light dropped out of hyperspace, the Elosian homeworld looming before them. Skora's heart sank as he saw the sickly green haze that enveloped the planet, a telltale sign of the Ferengi bioweapon. They were too late. Varys, are you seeing this? Skora asked over the comm, his voice tight. I am, Varys replied grimly. The attack has already begun. We must act quickly. As they entered the atmosphere, Skora could see the devastation below. The once vibrant Elosian cities lay in ruins, the streets littered with the bodies of the dead and dying. The air was thick with the stench of sickness and decay. The arc light touched down on the outskirts of what had once been a thriving metropolis. Skora, Vance and Varys disembarked, their weapons at the ready. They were met by a small group of Elosians, their faces gaunt and haunted. One of the Elosians, a young man with piercing blue eyes, stepped forward. I am Zorel, he said, his voice thin but determined. We are the last survivors of this city. Skora holstered his blaster and extended his hand. I'm Skora, this is Vance and Varys, we're here to help. Zorel shook his hand, a flicker of hope in his eyes. We've been hiding in the underground tunnels trying to stay alive, but many of our people have already succumbed to the sickness. Zorel, Vance said gently. We know this is a terrible time, but we need information. Do you know anything about the bioweapon? Anything that could help us stop it? Zorel hesitated, then nodded. There are a few among us, a small group who have not fallen ill. We believe they may have a natural immunity to the weapon. Skora and Vance exchanged a glance. Immunity? Skora asked. How is that possible? We don't know for certain, Zorel admitted. But our scientists believe it may be due to a rare genetic mutation. If we could study this immunity, perhaps we could find a way to create a cure. Skora turned to Varys. This could be the key to stopping the Ferengi. If we can develop a cure, we can save the Elotians and prevent this from happening to other worlds. Varys nodded, his expression determined. Agreed, but we must also stop the Ferengi at the source. I will infiltrate their command ship and sabotage it from within. Are you sure? Skora asked. That's a big risk. It's a risk we must take, Varys said firmly. The Ferengi cannot be allowed to continue this genocide. As Varys prepared to depart, Zorel led Skora and Vance to the underground tunnels where the survivors were hiding. The conditions were grim, with little food or water, and the air thick with the stench of sickness. In one corner of the tunnel, a woman was hunched over a makeshift laboratory, her brow furrowed in concentration. Zorel approached her, placing a hand on her shoulder. Dr. Lena Zor, he said, these are the ones I told you about, the ones who have come to help. The woman looked up, her eyes tired but sharp. You're the off-worlders, she asked. Skora nodded. We're here to do whatever we can. Zorel tells us you're working on a cure. Dr. Zor smiled thinly, trying to at least, but without proper equipment it's been difficult and time is running out for our people. Vance stepped forward. We have medical supplies on our ship. We can bring them down, help you set up a proper lab. Dr. Zor's eyes widened. That would be a great help. With the right tools, I believe we can isolate the genetic factors that provide immunity and synthesize a cure. As Skora and Vance worked to unload the supplies from the arc light, Varys boarded a small shuttle and set off towards the Ferengi command ship. He knew that infiltrating the ship would be dangerous, but he also knew that it was their best chance to stop the Ferengi's genocidal plan. On board the command ship, High Commander Zolak stood before a large viewscreen, watching as the bioweapon spread across the Elosian homeworld. A cruel smile played across his lips. 
Let this be a message to the rest of the galaxy, he said, his voice cold. The Ferengi are the supreme power. Those who defy us will be destroyed. Varys, disguised in a stolen Ferengi uniform, slipped silently through the ship's corridors. He planted a series of explosive charges in key locations, each one designed to cripple the ship's systems. As he worked, he overheard a group of Ferengi soldiers talking. Did you hear what Zolak said? One of them asked. He's going to broadcast the Elotian genocide to the entire quadrant. A demonstration of our power, he called it. Ferris's blood ran cold. He knew that if Zolak succeeded, it would mean the end of countless innocent lives. He had to be stopped, no matter the cost. Back on the planet's surface, Skora and Vance worked tirelessly alongside Dr. Zor and her team. They collected samples from the immune illusions, analyzing the genetic data for any clues to the source of their immunity. Hours turned into days as they worked, the situation growing more desperate with each passing moment. The death toll climbed higher and higher, the tunnels filling with the bodies of the fallen. But finally, after countless trials and setbacks, Dr. Zor made a breakthrough. I've got it, she exclaimed, her eyes shining with triumph. The genetic sequence that provides immunity, with this, I can synthesize a cure. Scora and Vance exchanged a look of relief and hope. They had done it. They had found a way to save the Elosians and stop the Ferengi's cruel plan. But even as they celebrated their victory, they knew that the fight was far from over. Varys was still aboard the Ferengi command ship, risking his life to sabotage their systems, and High Commander Zolak was still out there, determined to see his genocidal plan through to the end. As Skora looked out over the ruined Elosian city, he felt a grim determination settle over him. They had won a battle, but the war was just beginning, and he would not rest until the Ferengi were defeated and the galaxy was safe from their tyranny. Skora, Vance, and the Elosians huddled around Dr. Zor as she analyzed the genetic data, her fingers flying across the keyboard. The underground lab was a hive of activity, with scientists and survivors alike working tirelessly to unravel the secrets of the Elosian immunity. I think I've got it, Dr. Zor said, her voice tinged with exhaustion and hope. The key is in this specific genetic sequence. If we can isolate it and synthesize a cure... Her words were cut short by the sound of explosions above ground. The room shook, dust raining down from the ceiling. Skora grabbed his blaster, his eyes meeting Vance's. Ferengi soldiers, he said grimly. They've found us. Vance nodded, her jaw set. We need to buy Dr. Zor more time. Skora turned to Zorel and the other Elosians. Stay here. Protect Dr. Zor and the research at all costs. Zorl hesitated for a moment before nodding, his eyes filled with determination. We will not let you down. Skora and Vance raced through the tunnels, emerging into the ruined city streets. A group of Ferengi soldiers advanced towards them, weapons drawn. Skora and Vance took cover behind a collapsed wall, trading blaster fire with the enemy. We need to draw them away from the lab, Skora shouted over the din of battle. Vance lobbed a grenade towards the Ferengi position, the explosion sending debris flying. Lead the way. They fought through the streets, the Ferengi soldiers pursuing them relentlessly. Skora and Vance worked in tandem, covering each other as they moved from cover to cover. The Elosian survivors who were able to fight joined them, their weapons scavenged from fallen Ferengi. Back in the lab, Dr. Zor worked feverishly, isolating the genetic sequence that held the key to the cure, Zorrel and the others stood guard, their eyes trained on the tunnel entrance. Suddenly, a group of Ferengi soldiers burst into the lab, their weapons trained on Dr. Zor. Step away from the console, one of them barked. Dr. Zor looked up, her eyes defiant. No, I will not let you stop this cure. The Ferengi soldier aimed his blaster at her. Then you will die. Zorrel charged forward, tackling the soldier to the ground. The other Elotians joined the fray, fighting hand to hand with the Ferengi. In the chaos, a stray blaster bolt struck Dr. Zor in the chest. She collapsed, her body slumping against the console. Azorel rushed to his sister's side, cradling her in his arms. 
Lena, stay with me. Dr. Zor coughed, blood staining her lips. She pressed a data chip into Zorel's hand. The cure, she whispered. It's finished. You must get it to Skora. Zorel nodded, tears streaming down his face. I will, I promise. Dr. Zor smiled, her eyes drifting closed. Save our people. As the battle raged on, Skora and Vance fought their way back to the lab. They arrived to find Zorel and the others standing over Dr. Zor's body, the Ferengi soldiers lying dead at their feet. Zorel handed Skora the data chip, his face etched with grief and determination. Dr. Zor finished the cure, but she. she didn't make it. Skora took the chip, his heart heavy. He looked around at the faces of the Elosians, seeing their pain and their hope. Her sacrifice will not be in vain, he said, his voice thick with emotion. We will save your people, I promise. Skora and Vance returned to the arc light, the data chip clutched tightly in Skora's hand. They gathered the remaining Tempest operatives, their faces grim but determined. We have the cure, Skora said, holding up the chip, but we need to distribute it on a global scale. And to do that, we need to get close to the Ferengi command ship. Van stepped forward, her eyes alight with an idea. What if we modify the Arclight's weapons to deliver the cure? We could use nanoparticles dispersed through the atmosphere. Skora nodded, a smile tugging at the corner of his mouth. That could work, but we'll need to avoid their defenses long enough to release the cure. As they worked to modify the Arclight, Skora's thoughts turned to Varys still aboard the Ferengi ship. He knew that their success hinged on Varys's ability to disable the ship's defences from within. On the bridge of the Ferengi command ship, Varys watched as Zolak paced back and forth, his face contorted with rage. I want those Elosian scum wiped out, Zolak snarled, and I want Skora and his band of rebels dead. Varys knew he had to act fast. He slipped away from the bridge, making his way to the ship's main engineering bay. Using his knowledge of Ferengi systems, he began to sabotage the ship's weapon systems, planting a series of carefully crafted viruses and overrides. Alarms blared throughout the ship as the weapons went offline. Zolak's voice boomed over the intercom, demanding an explanation. Varys used the distraction to make his way to the communications array, his heart pounding in his chest. With trembling fingers, Varys activated the ship-wide broadcast system. He took a deep breath, steeling himself for what he was about to do. Attention all Ferengi ships, he said, his voice shaking but clear. This is Varys, former lieutenant to High Commander Zolak. I have uncovered the truth about Zolak's rogue bioweapons program. He has betrayed our people, using banned and unethical weapons to wage a campaign of genocide against the Elosians. Varys paused, letting his words sink in. I urge you, my fellow Ferengi, to stand down. Do not follow Zolak's orders. He has led us astray, and his actions will bring ruin to our people. On the bridges of the Ferengi ships surrounding the Elosian homeworld, captains and crew members listened to Varys's message, their faces a mix of shock and anger. One by one, ships began to break formation, pulling away from the planet. Zolak watched in disbelief as his fleet abandoned him, his face twisted with rage. He turned to his guards, his eyes wild. Find Varys, he snarled. Bring him to me alive. But Varys was already gone, slipping away in an escape pod as the command ship descended into chaos. He watched from a distance as the arc light approached the planet, its modified weapons glowing with the promise of a cure. Skora stood on the bridge of the arc light his hand hovering over the release button. He looked out at the Elosian homeworld, a sense of hope and determination filling his chest. This is for Dr. Zor, he said softly, and for all the lives lost to the Ferengi's cruelty. He pressed the button, and the arc light released a shimmering cloud of nanoparticles into the atmosphere. The particles glowed a soft blue as they dispersed, carrying the cure to every corner of the planet. On the surface, Zorel and the other Elosians watched as the sky lit up with the shimmering particles. They felt a tingling sensation on their skin, and slowly, miraculously, the symptoms of the bioweapon began to fade. 
Cries of joy and relief filled the air as the Elosians realized that they had been saved. Skora and his team watched from orbit, their hearts full of pride and satisfaction. They had done it, they had stopped the Ferengi and saved an entire species from extinction. But even as they celebrated their victory, Skora knew that the fight was far from over. Zolak was still out there, and there would be others like him who sought to use bioweapons and genetic manipulation for their own gain. As the arc light set course for the Tempest base, Skora looked out at the stars, a renewed sense of purpose filling his heart. He would continue to fight, to protect the innocent, and stand up against tyranny in all its forms. For he knew that as long as there were those willing to stand against the darkness, there was still hope for the galaxy. Skora's hands flew over the Arclight's controls, his eyes locked on the looming Ferengi command ship. The cure was loaded and ready, the modified weapon systems humming with energy. Around him, the bridge crew worked frantically, their faces tense with concentration. Incoming fire, Vance shouted from her station. Zolak's not going down without a fight. The arc light shuddered as Ferengi weapons pounded its shields. Sparks flew from overloaded consoles, the acrid scent of burnt circuitry filling the air. Skora gritted his teeth, sweat beading on his forehead as he wrestled with the controls. Just a little closer, he muttered. Almost there. With a final desperate surge of power, Skora brought the arc light into position. His finger hovered over the release button, his heart pounding in his chest. This is for the illusions, he said, his voice steady. For Dr. Zor and for all those we've lost. He pressed the button, and the arc light shuddered as it released its payload. On the view screen, a shimmering cloud of nanoparticles streamed towards the planet's atmosphere, glowing softly in the starlight. Skora watched. His breath held as the particles began to disperse. Slowly, gradually, the sickly green hue that had enveloped the planet began to fade, replaced by the healthy blue of a healing world. Teochir went up from the bridge crew, their voices mingling with the whoops and cries of joy from the Elosian survivors on the surface. They had done it. The cure was spreading, the bioweapon neutralized. But the battle wasn't over yet. On the Ferengi command ship, Varys stood face to face with Zolak, the two men circling each other on the smoke-filled bridge. You've ruined everything, Zolak snarled, his eyes wild with rage. Betrayed your own people, your own commander. Varys shook his head, his stance calm and measured. No, Zolak, you betrayed us when you decided to play God with the lives of innocent species, when you put your own ambition above the principles of our people. Zolak let out a roar of fury and lunged at Varys, his fists flying. Varys met him head on, the two men grappling and trading blows in a brutal display of hand-to-hand -hand combat. They crashed against consoles, sparks flying as they pummeled each other with ruthless efficiency. Zolak fought with the manic strength of a man consumed by rage, but Varys's skills and cool-headed determination gave him the edge. With a final decisive blow, Varys sent Zolak crumpling to the deck unconscious. He stood over his former commander, his chest heaving with exertion. This ends now, Varys said, his voice ringing with authority. He turned to the stunned Ferengi crew, his eyes hard. All ships, stand down. The bioweapons program is over. We will not be party to genocide. In the aftermath of the battle, Skora and his team were welcomed as heroes by the Elosians. Zorel, his eyes shining with gratitude, clasped Skora's hand in a firm grip. We owe you our lives, he said, his voice thick with emotion. Our people will never forget what you've done for us. Skora nodded, humbled by the weight of Zorel's words. We only did what was right, he said. Your people deserve to live in peace, free from the threat of oppression. As the Tempest prepared to depart, Varys approached Skora, his face somber. I have a long road ahead of me, he said, reforming the Ferengi, building a new path forward. It won't be easy. Skora clasped Varys's shoulder, a gesture of solidarity. You're not alone, he said. The Tempest will be there to help in whatever way we can. Varys nodded, a flicker of hope in his eyes. I'll hold you to that, my friend. As the Arclight soared away from the Elotian homeworld, 
Skora felt a sense of renewed purpose. They had struck a blow against tyranny, but he knew the fight was far from over. The urgent message from Grayson Stark only confirmed his suspicions. The Ferengi bioweapons program was just the beginning, a single thread in a web of conspiracy that threatened to ensnare the entire galaxy. But Skora knew that he and his team would be ready. Together they would stand against the darkness no matter the cost. The Void Syndicate, whatever it was, would soon learn the true strength of the Tempest. The Arclight scanners hummed as Skora poured over the data, his brow furrowed in concentration. The more he dug, the deeper the rabbit hole seemed to go. The Void Syndicate's tendrils stretched far beyond anything they had anticipated, manipulating events on a galactic scale. I've got something, Vance said, her fingers flying over the console. A pattern in the Syndicate's activities. They've been orchestrating conflicts between species for years, funneling resources and tech to both sides. Skora leaned in, his eyes widening as he saw the connections. They're not just profiting from the chaos, they're directing it, shaping the galaxy to their own ends. Grayson Stark's hologram flickered to life, his face grim. It's worse than we thought. The Syndicate's endgame isn't just power or control. They're after something else entirely. The Tempest crew gathered around as Stark laid out the evidence. The Syndicate's ultimate prize was an ancient alien technology, rumoured to grant godlike abilities to those who wielded it. They had been searching for it for decades, and now they were close to unlocking its secrets. We have to stop them, Skora said, his voice hard. If the Syndicate gets their hands on that tech, the galaxy is doomed. They followed the trail of clues, piecing together the fragments of the Syndicate's plan. It led them to a remote, forgotten planet, its coordinates lost to time. As the arc light dropped out of hyperspace, they were greeted by a grim sight. The Syndicate's forces swarmed the planet's surface, their ships bristling with weapons. Scorer's heart sank as he realized they were too late. The Syndicate had already begun to harness the ancient technology, its power thrumming through their vessels. We can't take them head on, Vance said, her eyes scanning the tactical display. We need to be smart about this. Skora nodded, a plan forming in his mind. We'll split up. Vance and I will infiltrate the Syndicate's stronghold, try to get to the heart of the tech. The rest of you keep their forces occupied. The Tempest crew sprang into action, their ships screaming towards the Syndicate's lines. Explosions bloomed in the void as the battle raged, the Tempest's pilots flying with desperate skill. Skora and Vance slipped through the chaos, their small craft darting towards the planet's surface. They landed in a hidden ravine, the Syndicate's sensors blind to their approach. They made their way through the twisting tunnels of the stronghold, their weapons at the ready. The air thrummed with an alien energy, setting Skora's teeth on edge. They were close, he could feel it. They burst into the central chamber, and there stood the Void Master, his form wreathed in shadows. The ancient technology pulsed behind him, a swirling vortex of eldritch light. You're too late, the Void Master said, his voice echoing with a thousand whispers. The gateway is open and the power of the ancients is mine. Skora and Vance exchanged a glance, a silent understanding passing between them. They had to destroy the gateway no matter the cost. They charged forward, weapons blazing. The Voidmaster laughed, the sound chilling Skora to the bone. The ancient technology lashed out, tendrils of dark energy whipping through the air. Skora and Vance fought with all they had, their bodies pushed to the limit. But the Voidmaster was too strong, his power fueled by the Eldritch forces surging through the gateway. It's not just a weapon, the Voidmaster cried, his eyes wild with madness. It's a doorway to another realm, one filled with horrors beyond your imagining. And when I unleash them upon the galaxy, all will bow before me. Skora's blood ran cold as he realized the true scope of the Syndicate's plan. They weren't just after conquest or domination. They sought to unleash an apocalypse, to let loose the nightmares that lurked in the spaces between stars. He locked eyes with Vance, a thousand words passing unspoken between them. They knew what they had to do. Vance pulled Skora close, 
her lips meeting his in a desperate, searing kiss. I love you, she whispered, her eyes shining with tears. Don't you ever forget that. Before Scora could react, Vance shoved him backwards, sending him tumbling through the portal. He screamed her name as the gateway collapsed behind him. The last thing he saw was Vance's face, set with grim determination as she detonated the explosives. The world went white, and then there was nothing. Scora awoke on the bridge of the arc light, his body aching with a thousand pains. The Tempest crew looked at him with a mixture of joy and sorrow, their faces telling him all he needed to know. They had won. The syndicate was broken, their plans shattered along with the gateway. But the cost had been high, too high. Scora felt a yawning void open up inside him, a black hole where Vance had once been. She was gone, sacrificed to save them all. He stood on unsteady legs, his gaze drifting to the stars beyond the viewport. The galaxy was safe, but the scars would linger. The Tempest's fight was far from over. But as he looked out into the infinite expanse, Scorer made a silent vow. He would honour Vance's memory and all those who had fallen in the battle against darkness. He would continue the fight, no matter where it took him. For he was the last of the Tempest, and the galaxy needed him now more than ever. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.